Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I'm going to keep the introduction short this time, um, but basically we're going to be showing you how I draw portraits. It's not to say that this is the only way to draw them by any means, and I don't follow the correct ways I guess. I don't personally I don't think there's any correct way to draw a portrait. I think as long as you're ending up with a result that you're happy with depending on the style that you want but I'm going to be showing you sort of a semi-realistic way to draw portraits and I hope you enjoy it. So to start off I wanted to redraw a portrait I have been doing for my portrait everyday challenge and I decided to go with one that I did two weeks ago just to see the progress that I've made and also because it's a front facing portrait it's quite a good one to start off with showing you how to draw a portrait. Now quick disclaimer here I don't claim that I am the best person at drawing portraits or anything like that and there are multiple different ways as I said to draw them. I don't start off with an oval shape followed by the grid lines showing you where the nose, eyes and mouth should be in the face. Um, this is very useful and I would recommend you at least trying it out. Personally for me I found it useful in remembering that the nose is in the middle of the face but that for the eyes and mouth I, I could never really quite get it to look right so I tend to just freehand it. And as you would see, and as you would have seen in other videos by now, I do always start off with the nose and then I pencil in where the right side of the eye and eyebrow will be, followed by the mouth and then I'll follow with the left side. I'm not quite sure why, it's just a little habit that I've gotten into. And then once the eyes, the nose and mouth is in play, then I'll start drawing out the right side of the face, followed by the left side of the face. Now I am doing it quite quick here because I did want to leave a few deliberate errors to show you how I would change those. Um, now this part here, I left that footage in of me taking a picture because that is what I do when I'm drawing my pictures. I will take a picture when I believe that I'm at a point where it's all done and then I will circle problem areas. Now by reversing the image like that, it does actually show you areas that aren't symmetrical that aren't looking right and by reversing it you can compare the two images side by side or keep flicking back between the two and you'll notice things that aren't level so like for example the left side of the lower jawline was looking really bulbous on that side it wasn't looking level at all and the glasses on the right side were looking far too slanted of a circle compared to the left side so I corrected these and then I've taken another picture and done the same again. Now this time it showed me an area which I didn't realise was an issue until I reversed it and that's the chin. The chin isn't in the right positioning. Now again something that is helpful with doing the oval face and then the grid lines is by having that line down the middle you already know where your chin should be. Your chin should be following the line in the middle of your nose, middle of your mouth to the middle of your chin. So I drew that line in just to help line up where the chin should be facing. It's the same even if you were turned, if you practice looking at yourself in a mirror or even just touching your chin, wherever you turn, the chin turns with you, obviously, because it's a part of you. So it is helpful getting used to the fact that if you have almost like a straight line going through your face, that's where it lines up with your chin. And then I kind of do the same for the hair part in here as well, although, because I am filming this, I'm leaning slightly where at a slight angle. And so that's why some of the things that we're finding are just the angles are off, like with the jawline and now the top of the head. Because I'm leaning away, it's more awkward for me to see this. So again, I took a lot more pictures than what I normally would and was reversing them more than I normally would, simply because because I was at an angle, I couldn't see these problems. Now that I've reversed it, I can see, okay, yep, we need to fix that top right side of the head and sort out the jawline again so that they match up. And actually the ears, the left ear was tiny. And you can see that by looking at the portrait normally. But sometimes when you're looking at the same image for too long, it can make you kind of overlook 
areas that need improving. And that's why most artists will tell you to walk away from your piece and then go back to it. For me, I'm far too impatient for this. And so that's why I use the taking a picture and then reversing the image. It's a much quicker way of seeing problem areas in your work and realizing areas that aren't matching up how they should be. Something to remember though, when you are doing this, is you could do this a hundred times, but at the end of the day, you don't want the face to be completely symmetrical. I do use my pencil, as you saw there, just to make sure that the nose is in line, the bottom of the ears are in line, and the bottom of the eyes are in line. This is just because on a face, that's generally the things that we are used to seeing. But as you'll see here, there are a few issues with the portrait still when I reverse it. However, I'm not bothering to correct all of these problems anymore. The reason being is if you overdo it and you correct them so that it looks 100% perfect when you reverse it, it will actually look more alien on a page because when you look at somebody, no face is completely symmetrical. We say it all the time, so I work in optics, and when people are collecting their glasses and they're like, oh, but they're lopsided and it, they'll be sitting flat on a table. Well, yeah, that's true, but that's because your, eye, your ears aren't completely level. Or when people try and use their eyebrows as a way to determine whether their glasses are level, well, that's not really going to help either because your eyebrows aren't always perfectly level. So that's something that I will always keep a few imperfections. So technically looking here, my eyebrows aren't actually level, they're slightly off. But because she's looking upward slightly, because she's got that ever so slight tilt to her head, one eyebrow should technically be up in my opinion because I want to show that she's got that slight angle. It's not highly pronounced, but it is there. Okay, so that's how I draw a portrait. As said, I don't really use the grid method of an oval shape, but do try and use it because it is helpful for getting your basics in terms of spacing on how it should look. But I prefer using taking a picture as many as you need to and reversing that image to show you areas that aren't actually looking correct that you need to sort out. Once you're at a point where you're happy with it, you can then go mad with whatever medium you want to use. So for this one, I'm using my usual Reeves gouache and I've done my usual of putting in a base layer of color and then going over the top with some darker tones of the same colors, just giving it a bit more depth. And then I'll go in with, I've actually mixed a slight green tinge for the darkest shadows on the skin this time, just because I wanted something a bit different rather than blues all the time. And it actually worked out pretty well. I'm quite pleased with how that turned out. And then keeping with the original drawing, I've done the yellow lips and I will actually be doing yellow glasses as well. I really liked this color scheme. It just reminded me of rhubarb and custard and who doesn't like a rhubarb and custard sweet? I mean, come on, they're amazing. So yeah, I was really pleased with how this one turned out. That's another thing. So when you're trying to practice your portraits, do loads of them. So I'm doing a portrait 365 day challenge. Obviously you don't have to do anything like that. There's loads of other challenges out there like the hundreds heads challenge, the meds 50 heads challenge, or even just drawing your friends and family and just looking on Pinterest and just screenshotting a load of pictures and just drawing them out. And another thing you can do is when you're doing this so often, it can be a bit disheartening. And as artists, we are overly critical and you can feel like, well, we've made zero progress here. Well, do a portrait that you've already done before and do what I'm doing, redo it. And then you can compare the two and see how far you've actually come. So this is only two weeks for me, but already I'm feeling more confident. It took me a lot less time to draw this than the first one. But yeah, so I hope these little tips that have helped. Um, yeah. Okay, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this little insight into how I draw portraits and the little tricks that I use to help get it to how I want it to look. Um, but yeah, so if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I should be having another video out on Monday as usual. Until then, keep safe and I'll see you then.